Everybody, it's Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here today with Kevin Brand, spanking new MVP. Congratulations! Thank you very much. Yeah, very fresh, very excited about it all. Still, I'm, I'm sure you're still excited about being an MVP. Oh, of course, I am. I'm, all those awards, but excited about the renewals. Like, yeah, no, I finally. <laughs> this is like the first time. This just was like a month ago. Finally, put these things up on the wall. It's they've been they in brilliant out there. Like, I love them. in the closet and stuff. But yeah. That's nice. Well, it, so why don't, for people that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us that grand introduction? Absolutely. Uh, so I'm Kevin McDonald. I'm a solutions architect uh, for a company called CPS, uh, based in the UK, another gold partner from Microsoft doing all things Microsoft 365. I focus on the modern workplace uh, arena within that. So uh, lots of going out, listening to clients, working out what they want and helping them get that with Microsoft 365, which is lots of fun. Uh, also a co-host of the Grey Hat Beard podcast. So an, another competing podcast. I hope it's OK to mention that. There's today. no competing. <laughs> podcast they all it's all asynchronous that's right absolutely so uh yeah a couple of well one one former colleague now and uh, another colleague um we talk about all things microsoft 365 talk about the latest news and then we try and get a guest on or uh, talk about a particular subject and waffle on for about 45 minutes and hope people listen to the end at some point you know, the, the, so I had years ago had an argument with a uh, a young man who was actually in uh, visiting Helsinki, speaking at the user group. There was in town for another event, and uh, you know, an argument about um, search. We argued about a di couple different things, but he <laughs> was uh, of the belief, and I've had this argument with other people too, that like uh, uh, once like the uh, uh, the penultimate article is written on a topic, there's no need for anyone to go in and blog on that content again so it's similar to like the podcast i'm like no we can be speaking on the same topic and have completely different life experiences in examples in industries and in geographies in the yeah. world and the nuances around I, that it's i was about to say the u.s view the european view the asian view has always got a slightly different i always love speaking to people in germany and the the ultra secure view and the sort of people's council things on there puts a completely different spin on things so uh yeah I, some people like it, some people don't, but it's the great thing about podcasts. You don't have to listen to if you don't like it. So, uh, well, it's another reason. I, and you're a longtime Collab Talk Tweet Jam participant. So, thank you for that. It's always it. great to have the voice. But one of the reasons I've been doing that, I mean, that was launched in January of 2012. Like that launched the month I became an MVP. I know it's it's a long time, uh, but with that is that, uh, I, and I just made this comment in another uh, recording, interview recording uh, this week that I'm always surprised every single month. It's a monthly event. It's Twitter based. So anybody can participate. If you're watching, if you see collab talk, the hashtag collab talk mm -hmm. and see whatever we're talking about, but is that every single time somebody shares an opinion or an experience that is like the opposite of what I thought on that topic of like, I never thought of that. It's fantastic. Especially yeah. for those of us that talk and blog and it's, it's, blog fodder as i like to call it absolutely and and i think it, it's very easy in the microsoft bubble to kind of get sucked along by what microsoft says it's all kind of agreeing with that and seeing that pretty view and you know as a freshly minted mvp i shouldn't shout too much against what microsoft do but it's good to have those competing voices it's good to see that alternatives because it it structures and makes you think and we do need to carry on thinking all the time and I would like to point out that Microsoft does like to stress that they don't want people that are just pure drinking the Kool-Aid, you know, yeah. the, the pure marketing speech, uh, unless they're paying for the travel that's associated with that. You know? <laughs> um, but they, but uh, the difference is with MVPs is that, and for the majority of MVPs is the constructive way that you provide the feedback back to Microsoft. And that's a huge difference. You can be very negative on a technology, um, yet, it's still constructive in your feedback of why Absolutely. you think this and and it's you, you don't have to hook line and sinker you know swallow everything that microsoft throws at you sometimes i'm so i'm very much, i used to say this in the sharepoint in the mic back migration like don't migrate if the next version if the value of the new features of the next version um are not there that the cost of moving is greater than the benefits that you'll receive there like stay where you are if you're productive you're effective 
Like, don't migrate, don't upgrade that until it makes sense for you to do that. Yeah. And I think it's, it's always that challenge is that why. And if you're going to complain about something, don't always have to have a solution. That's nice if you've got an idea for how it can be better, but say why you don't like it, get into that detail and it helps people improve things. And I, I, Gary Trinder, sort of co-host on Grey Hat Beard, it loves Simon Sinek, start with why, start with that answer to why you're doing things. And you know, talk about migrations, going through a lovely one at the moment that's been dragging on far longer than it should do. Um, but it's, it's why you're doing it. Are you just wanting that functionality? Are you looking to shut down old technology? Are you worried about things being end of life and things? Uh, on there all very good reasons to move off and make sure you're supporting that if you're going just because someone else is on the new shiny things yeah it's not always the nicest thing to do although so, i do like new shiny stuff as well so i'm just saying uh, have you seen the the show ted lasso uh did you know funny I've, I've watched the first few and yeah. loved it uh and my wife loved it as well which is really annoying because we now have to align and make sure we're in the right frame of mind to watch it rather than i can just blast through it so I, i've got the last few to watch on that but uh yeah, yeah love it it's, it's it reminds like me for, of my uh, local club for people that haven't uh, uh seen it i mean it, it is uh you know so i've heard from other people i've tried to get like my 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 kids to watch it and they're like yeah i don't like soccer I'm like it's not about <laughs> soccer it's not about no, football absolutely. you know uk football it's uh, so that's not the point i said you it's it's hilarious but it, it is also one of the more optimistic you know television shows that i've ever seen i mean it's just yeah and it's not syrupy i mean he he's hilarious like but he it's it's done with uh or it's just so genuine the way that he does it anyway mm. my point in all we, that, we do a lot about change and adoption and there's so many stories in that right that you can take that change and adoption story how how do you convert people to wanting to do things the right way and right i, I think against their will they, you, they will like me yeah no but the, <laughs> the story that i that i was gonna bring that you kind of uh, mentioned um i that i i i love was when he's in the bar with his bosses the owner of the team's ex-husband and they're playing darts and he tells a little story about being <laughs> underestimated. And, but, but so he, anyway, so he, he I, I guess it's like a Walt Whitman quote that he mentions that he saw in his son's on the paint on the wall of his elementary school that said uh, like, be curious. And there's mm -hmm. probably more to the quote, but it was, that was essentially it. And he says, he says, as I looked around at all the people that would shut me down, I'm going back to what I was saying about the people that are so negative on certain, you know, and how you provide the feedback. But he says, I says, I was really, as I saw that, and I really thought about my life, about how the people, the bullies in my life, how they weren't curious. They didn't ask questions. They just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Like he says, like, for example, like, you know, if you had asked me, like, Ted, have you ever played darts before? I would have said, yes, yes, I have every Sunday with my dad since I was 10 <laughs> years old, you know, and he then <laughs> hits like a bullseye, you know, um, so, it, but it, it's awesome. But that's, that's like my approach to community. Like you have to be not overly optimistic about the technology. There are some mm -hmm. things that I'm genuinely excited and passionate about. There's other things where I'm just like, nope. I, and I've been very vocal about it. I'm like, and I, and why I've not been passionate about it, or, you know, vocal about it. Like saying things like, like I just, like, there's a number of things I won't go into details, but uh, where I've said like- You were tempted um, there for a minute, like, weren't you? I, I am, <laughs> but I'm uh, <laughs> I was like, where I need to understand is that I'm holding my feedback because I don't yet understand the administrative experience. I don't yet understand the architecture of the solution. Well, here, a great example that I will publicly talk about um, was private channels. And remember all mm -hmm. the discussion that happened around private channels and people concerned yeah, about it. Yeah. And I kept saying like, until I see how you actually architect it, because they did share at the MVP summit years ago, um, when they were talking to, they said, we could go like three or four different ways. And here's what we're thinking. Let's get your feedback. And three of the ways were really, really bad, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, uh, and so we all provided. I'm, I'm trying to work out what's by my tongue. This was the good way. Ah, okay. <laughs> Interesting. But, but that's, uh, but it, it does make sense. People are Microsoft are much yeah. more responsive to constructive the feedback than they are to just bashing them shocking exactly they're they're human beings i, that I think <laughs> it also gives them the opportunity i i think it's fair to say when viva first came out there was a lot of people who went oh 
hang on, this is just four different things, what, three different things that are already out there, right. plus learning, and it's just rebranding. What is the point of this? Well, and, even learning and, was out there with the, with learning pathways. There was something. Yeah, that, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. so there was, there was stuff out there. But I think it, Microsoft's gone a lot better at persuading people of saying, actually putting this common theme to stuff, Yep, the story might not be there now, but run with us a little bit. Give us a little bit of leeway. We'll fill in these gaps. Um, and I think to, to where I, you know, I've been following a lot of Viva, loving what things. I've loved Cortex from when it was first announced, seeing the topic, seeing that capability come out and seeing people get that ease of use. I think they've done a pretty good job about uh, making available that kind of add-on license. So it's not just about E5s and making it have people the choice and justify that. And then by plugging in all these different bits, plugging in the uh, the work lab. If people haven't seen it, Microsoft.com slash work lab with the science and evidence and data behind it. I love it's that. built thing. upon that thing. Great. And I, I think Great it's an absolutely fantastic around. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah really again, nice. And it's it. Work, it's kind of going there. That fever isn't tech. Yeah, yeah sorry. Go. I was going to say that worklab.com, if you're not, if you're not seeing that new blog, but it's just, it's, it's part of what you've mentioned is it's, it's the in-depth of the research that they've been doing. And it's yeah. kind of like the story behind what they're building around the yeah. work-life balance, the wellness, you know, stuff. It's, it's, that, it's that employee it's engagement that. experience. It's that, it's that brand of Viva. And once you kind of flip your head, so that initial reaction as you talked about that can quite often be there, like, eh, this is the same old stuff. Gradually trying to put that cynicism slightly to one side of uh, people who've been around the industry for a while and sort of go, Actually, if you throw this as a brand and the amount that people are now talking about it, I think it says that they've done the right thing of saying, do you know, we don't just have to talk about technology. We can sometimes talk about things as a wrapper around that technology that is that brand because it lands with the right people. Uh, and, and I think it's it's good for us as some people have been there for a little while to kind of have that pause and go, OK, yeah, I see where you're going with this a bit now. Well, another example is Yammer. And I mean, again, you have all mm. the, the haters out mm. there for a long time. And now when you look at it from the Viva perspective, where Microsoft is going, Microsoft has always said, it's an important part of our roadmap and, yeah. and the things that we're working on. And now that you see how Yammer helps light up both connections and topics, like you're, if you're yeah, anti-Yammer, awesome. you are behind uh, you know, on, the, uh, on the cycles around what's happening with Viva and Microsoft direction. And there are still quite a few haters out there, but, there uh, you know, they're gradually listing. And, and I think, as you said, don't just hate, say why you hate. And there's some valid reasons. We, we have a few clients that have real issues with that single feed. And, and I like Yammer for that single feed. But if you've got three different pillars to your organization that wants three different focuses on that or your kind of combination of organizations, doesn't work quite so well for you. So uh, well, I think isn't that's that funny. There is some valid stuff. Isn't that funny how Yammer also falls into the it depends category? <laughs> but we should go and here. that's another one in the square box for the it depends. Right. Yeah. That's the, I, you know, I, I, I don't know why I don't have like an it's depend t shirt or sticker. I think that needs to be my next community sticker that i go and create for people you know i, I have been up. looking to get i saw louise freeze had a swear box that every time she says it depends some money goes in there and so uh, <laughs> that's I, funny maybe, maybe that's what we should get all the yeah. mvps who are consultants to have that and let's get a charity every Think year of the, the MVP millions charity. of dollars we could raise every year we could raise a lot man. do you know that's a new i, I might actually strip of that idea as <laughs> one to pick up but, uh, that's that's a funny no, idea. idea. Yeah, the, the, there would uh, I can't afford to participate in that. Uh, in that <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, but uh, so what else? What else are you kind of passionate about? What are you writing about? Talking about right now? Um, so I think Viva and Search are big things have been out there um, talking about. I love Microsoft Search. Uh, it, it's funny as as kind of going out and being a speaker, you kind of create a set of talks that you try and reuse as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And some ones you might not expect suddenly become more and more popular. And, and Microsoft Search and uh, talking about that has kind of filled a gap, which is great. And I, I think there's a lot of unheralded stuff within there that people just think it's SharePoint Search on there. For me, the capability to upload your... Um, office for those who remember what those things called offices are uh, to put your desks in there and have that desk locator is all included in your license and i spent tens of that i think it got to hundreds of thousands of pounds on a project a few years back to try and implement the same thing so to have that there in your license it's amazing and all the different bits in there that's that get included the ai goodness do i think it's fully there yet 
No. Do I wish it had been a little bit quicker? Do I wish Teams was using Microsoft Search? Yes, it's all coming soon. It's all yeah. getting together. And I think it, it has taken a while, but the story that's coming off the back of it is more than people expect. Uh, and I, yeah. I love that. So I just had somebody, uh, it may, it may have been like four to six weeks ago, but somebody that reached out, I, I wrote something and they responded it's like, yeah, but you know, it's, it's too bad that there's nothing happening with search. I'm like, there's tons that are happening with search. And then yeah. I had to pause. I, that's how I responded uh, via Twitter. And then I paused and I, then I thought, okay, a lot of what I know is NDA. I can't talk about that. I can't, <laughs> I can't talk about that. And I, so I ended up um, just direct messaging the person saying, Hey, you need to go pay attention to what this team is doing. What like Bill Bear, what Naomi Moneypenny mm. and her team, like, like what's happening around there. It's because search, the story for search is integrated in a few different areas and there's still the consumer yeah. end of things and what's happened with Bing and the, all these teams are talking and working. They're like there's a lot going on. And so we just saw some of that, the, some of the latest updates via uh, build. And, and there's going to be more news and more, you know, showing of, of the next steps at Ignite and, and going on. So there's, there's constantly things that are happening, but it's just, it's striped across other solutions, other platforms. Yeah. It's not like, not with the Microsoft search. Oh, here's what's happening with search. No, it's integrated in. It just appears onto it. It's like that. The phrase has kind of gone out slightly, but that everyday AI, and I'm quite glad it's gone because it's really hard to say. I'm just remembering uh, on there, but uh, it's that surfacing of content, getting things in front of you that you didn't know you needed before you before you know you need it. Which uh, was like, kind of what Delve was. Delve. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, so a lot of it is. What's so, I mean, yeah. yeah. So Delve is an app. I mean, went away, but that is that's the new search experience. And Microsoft even said like that yeah. was a, like an R and D effort. And it was going to be integrated into the other other applications. So it's not so much about your one location, your one destination for search, but it's about how that's picked up across the various applications and yeah, having a consistent absolutely. experience. And I think what, what I love about Microsoft Search is it's consistent, but context aware as well. So it knows where you are. If you're looking at SharePoint, it's going to show you SharePoint content. If you're searching in a document library, it will show you that SharePoint view like a document library in the search results. So it kind of has that little tweaks that are really small things, but make a huge difference. And, and I think people often don't notice some of those tweaks that go in there as well. They just slide in nicely and uh, people don't complain about them. They just fit what it does. And uh, I, I feel Microsoft Search suffers a little bit from that uh, in that it just works in many cases. A little bit. And that's that. I, I guess that is also part of the problem with the new you know, release model where we see yeah. incremental, incremental, incremental. And so you think you, you don't think about what is actually what's adding up to be occasionally you get like the, the 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 more major release and feature sets in there and things are kind of bundled in a way where you pay attention to that and forget yeah. that for the past six to eight weeks we've seen little tiny things that's why again I, it's it's hard to go in there and just create a filter for anything search related um <laughs> you you could go trust me i've tried yeah right. yeah <laughs> So you could go in there, but then you're watching so many items because it's striped across all those workloads. Um, but it's uh, it, 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 it's you know, but you can you can do that. And and the part of the recommendation is always and like I don't know who kind of your go to uh, people that you listen to the the podcast, the blogs, the things that are out there. But find the community members you know that are you know, most active that are the resident experts on that topic and absolutely be engaged. And he talks about Bill Bear. I, I love what Bill Bear is doing, sharing. He's got this kind of his official stuff that comes through the tech community blogs. He's yep. got his own blogs where he says some amazing stuff. And, and Mark Cashman as well. Yep. Um, I, he put a recent post up about Viva that was his use of Viva within Microsoft. And uh, I, I love that. It was showing the sort of real side of it and how it actually makes a difference. So, uh, yeah, there's lots of good people around there who are trying to pick stuff up. And it's it, it's funny, it's talking about that release cycle. Um I was chatting to someone the other day about builds and everyone's like, it's rubbish. There was so much that had been announced already that have come out. And and it's easy to forget when you do stay on top of everything so much that a lot of people don't because they have a day job to do and a real job to do rather than just listening to people and regurgitating stuff, which is important. But 
they don't have the time to do that. So to have those regular uh, conferences where they actually do reiterate what has been available and just remind people, because we all miss things um, and people who aren't doing it day in, day out need those reminders and, and kind of wrap up of stuff as well. It's really important. And as you say, great, great podcast, The Intra Zone, love listening to that. The guys from the Microsoft Cloud Show um, always wrap things up and have a nice chatter and a bit of banter around it as well, which is good to listen to. And and you, you talked about those different view of things. The, there are different ways you like to consume content, whether it's people being very formal and dictating what's out there and saying, here is the latest release, here is the latest stuff, or you like to listen to people having a bit of a chat about things and yep. uh, on there, or whether you like to listen to tweet jams and hear lots of uh, amazing experts talk about things there and there, which I love. And I love going back afterwards and seeing all the bits I've missed as well. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things too, is uh, it, it, no matter because no matter how many times you hit refresh on the screen, it's Twitter, it's flying by. I have multiple yeah. panels open, but you've got to refresh. Man, I wish that Twitter would do one good thing for the world, which is allow the uh, the the the, um, the feed API, uh, the list feed, yeah. um, to to be renewed again, so that I could create like one view that's a hashtag based and just follow it in real time, like we used to do, before yeah. they shelved with no plans to ever reopen that up. No, we know how to do things better. Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, a lot of that. I, I, I should give a shout out to people see it behind yes. me. Uh, Happy Hour Etiquette is our big one. So uh, myself and the other two from Grey Hat Beard, so Al Erdley and Gary Trinder are joined by Rain Summers, Carolina Ketikari and Louise Fries. And every other month or two months, we, we've been a bit busy, so spread it out to every two months at the moment. Uh, we, we have a session where we talk about the etiquette of Microsoft 365 and we, we do it in a style, if anyone from the UK has listened to BBC Radio 5's uh, Fighting Talk, we have a set of questions, each person stands up there and kind of debates their own little thing and uh, they get points and if they say something I don't like or the host doesn't like, they lose points on there uh, and we, we yeah, it, it can get a bit brutal at times but uh, it's very light-hearted. Um, we do call it happy hour and certainly most of us try and bring an alcoholic drink along as well. Cups of tea are allowed too as, um, for those who want it and then we finish up with defending the indefensible and we, uh, on that we ask someone to take something absolutely awful like i think the wiki should remain there in teams for everyone who, who's that, crazy enough to, to say make that. that statement who defended that come on <laughs> uh, yeah it, it was a struggle that one yeah Nobody there was generally that. a lot of sarcasm with the answers yeah. on those uh, so it's, it's always a bit yeah. of uh, hilarity and for those of us who are drinking by the end it gets a little bit more fighting talk as well and, and we encourage it it's all done via team so we do ask people to sort of say what they think and and similar to the collab talk we ask people to come and say uh, bring their views as well where they want to speak out where they want to put chat in there uh, it's great fun and, and i think etiquette is such a important subject when it comes to microsoft 365 so the things you have to do but there's the things you can do to make life easier for everyone and just do things in a nicer way and that that's what we see as the etiquette that we talk about as well well one of the things too that i, I think you've, you've kind of mentioned this too but whether you're watching a, a show but you get involved um so mm -hmm. I, kind of maybe we wrap up the discussion talking about kind of your path into mvp i love jeremy fake's uh, uh comment about how he <laughs> looked at so Jeremy Thake, so former MVP, he's now at Microsoft. So he's uh, within the product teams. Was you know saw that hey your name came through as potential MVPs, and his response was, I thought he already was an MVP. That that's a common refrain for a lot of people. Like I got that a lot yeah. before I got earned my MVP, uh, and and that's and I think that about other people too. And I've submitted other names of people that just like why are you not an MVP and and uh, you know fought to get some some people in that were doing the work for years and why are they getting you're not being added in there but um you know part of it is uh um getting involved so if you're wondering yeah. where to get start i'd say like get involved like participate in the uh the tweet jams is a great one like you've been involved for years and participating in those Absolutely. And I, i'd say i've gone through a long slow um, you know, you have the, those pop stars that appear out of nowhere and there's others that have been fighting for years and pushing through it. And it was always my, I wouldn't say my aim was to become an MVP. My aim is to be, get involved community, get to know, share the things I've learned over there. And because I've seen people like yourself sharing on there, people like Jeremy who shared over the years, Mark Anderson used to love what he did with SP services. Used and to, seeing that there's a company. That's maybe, oh, it's, yeah, maybe it's a uh, difference uh, between yeah. the two of us. <laughs> 
I, do, I do still love his. In fact, we we had. Um, uh, I know you were talking about with Emily Mancini. We we had Simon Doy and Simon Hudson have been working with the um, maturity model for Microsoft uh -huh. 365 and loving the stuff that Mark's doing with that. But yep. it was seeing people over the years who sort of helped and shared and have gradually gone to that. Start with Collab Talk. Um, probably shout to the uh, Collab 365 team and the conferences they did there. When I was more on the client, uh, I started off very much in financial services on the client side before moving to consultancy and tried to get involved in the community but it's it's hard to find the time gradually on that and yeah. gradually working for different organizations who want to support you more and more and trying to find people as well uh, I've, I've got three small boys um so finding the time to get out i can't jump around all the time and go to community events left right and center because got family covid has helped me in that way massively right. because all these things so many have user groups have all moved online right yeah absolutely and you can kind of get involved suddenly yep. i could do things Unfortunately, means I also was then suddenly doing things every night of the week, which uh, became a bit more of a challenge if my wife's yeah. listening. Yeah, you still have to uh, manage that, but but it becomes easier. I mean, even yeah. for the local user group, like we just had uh, here uh, like two weeks ago, our first in person in over a year and a half. Yeah, so just oh, just happened things have opened back up here, um, but I dialed in. Why? Because I was just too busy. I had meetings before and after, but I was able yeah. to participate. Um, Tom Duff and I are presenting to. Uh, the the, uh, the the Minneapolis user group uh, next week where uh, I've I've presented to you know different user groups in in India and the UK and things like online it's That's great amazing. for that yeah. so there there are more opportunities now that have actually opened up. And I, and I love that. I, I think as things get back to real life that that hybrid way of doing things I think will become the norm as well so I, I think we need that in person. Uh, I remember seeing you at ESPC um, very briefly and things on there. Meeting people does make a difference, but you can't always do that. So getting that blend of both of those is nice. And, and it also means you can get that small community of people who know each other face to face, supported by a lot more, a lot of others as well. I think it's the way to go things. It's, it's that experience that people want from it. And uh, yeah, I've loved that. So uh, look, looking forward, we, we've got our first big conference in the UK, the uh, this Commsverse and the South Coast yep. Summit coming up in September, October. Very much looking forward to getting Back in person. Yep. Back in real life. Yep. Uh, yep. Touch wood, as we say in the UK. Mine is in August. Hopefully, but Yeah, we get the North American Collab Summit. So Mark Rackley's event. Uh, so Are I'll you be, going along to that one? I will be there in person. And uh, then this fall, I'll be back in Vegas in December for the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference, formerly the SharePoint Conference. Uh, so that's back in Las Vegas. So yeah, I'm looking forward to things opening back up. Yeah. You know, but uh, well, anyway, well, Kevin, really appreciate your time today. One more time, if people want to find you, what are the best best paths to get your attention to get get in front of you? So on. On Twitter at Kev McDonk, uh, is, do follow me there on most things at Kev McDonk. That's K E V M C D O N K. Up above his head. Uh, <laughs> on there, yeah, actually yep. up there, and at Grey Hat Beard. So uh, follow follow the uh, the podcast on there. We we do it for the fun and joy of community and sharing. And if anyone wants to appear on there, always good to have guests uh, talking about subjects as well. We're yes. pretty open on the subject. Don't, you know, don't be shy. Fun. Like volunteer yourself. The worst thing yeah, that'll happen is, is they'll say, you know, now that doesn't really fit our, our model. But but yeah, people volunteering is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. No, we'd, we'd love to. Uh, and I think uh, I, I don't want to say this too much, but quite a few people who've appeared on the show have become MVPs. So, you know, if you're thinking about doing that. Kevin claims the, chance, the golden but... touch. Yeah, I'm, uh, what, what can we say there? It's like, yeah, if you've yeah. got the numbers to back it up, then yeah, hey, make the claim. Yeah, just, just putting it out there. So yeah. Uh, We'll really Shameless appreciate your time. People. It's great to talk. No, and we'll, uh, you know, we've got another tweet jam happening later this month. So we'll see you later this month. Definitely. And thank you for all you do in the community as well. Yeah, no worries. Talk to you soon. Cheers. <laughs>